Hi, my name is Gary Emerald with Tentmaker Ministries. I'm going to speak on this particular video series on a topic that is really dear to my heart, and it's the topic of toxic Bibles. You might want to know what it what is a toxic Bible? You probably have never heard that term before. Maybe it has never been expressed. Maybe I just coined a new word, a new phrase. I don't know. But in my life, I've been a Christian for 23 years, and I can say without hesitation that I was poisoned by a group of Bibles that I have labeled today toxic Bibles. I became a Christian at age of 23, uh, 23 years ago, <clears throat> at age 37. And it was the most wonderful time of my life. This Jesus character, who was my favorite cuss word, became the most precious word in my vocabulary. And this thing of, uh, that Christians you know, talk about, you know, having a rebirth um, that was just empty words to me at age 37 on Valentine's Day, 1985, that happened to me. And it was beyond a shadow of a doubt the most wonderful thing that happened in my life. I was full of life. I was full of joy. That peace that passes all understanding that the Bible talks about it, it was mine. It was wonderful to be living compared to what my life was as an atheist and as an alcoholic. I started going to church. I started reading the Bible. I was sharing this joy with people around me, with my friends and, and uh, business associates. And people saw a brand new person in Gary Emerald. But after three or four years of being in many churches, um, I mean, I loved going to church. I'd go to church most of the time when it was open. If there was a speaker, a special a program or something like that, I was there. And after four years of being a Christian, a zealous Christian, I came to a state of being in a condition that was worse than I was as an, al as an alcoholic and as an atheist. I wanted to die. I was such a hypocrite, and I thought that my friends, my Christian friends and my pastor, we were all a bunch of pretenders, and life was miserable. I was not happy with, with, with what was going on in my soul. And I told God that. I told God, I said, you know, whatever is going on here, I was better off as an atheist. I can't go back to atheism because I knew that Jesus Christ was indeed the Son of God and that He was my Savior. It was, it was impossible to go back to atheism. But my Christian life stank, and I didn't want any part of it anymore. And I didn't know what was going on. I didn't understand what, what, what was happening. But what ended up happening, and I didn't know it then, but over the last few years, I've discovered that I had been poisoned. I had been poisoned by toxic Bibles. Bibles that have concepts of God and His plan of salvation that are not in the original Greek and the original Hebrew, the original languages of the Bible. I had been taught in church that the Bible was the inerrant, infallible, God-breathed uh, Word of God. And that's simply not true. The Word of God is a person, and His name is Jesus. And these Bible translations, nobody told me when I was in church that there was a major difference between many Bible translations. This group of Bibles that you see right here in front of me, I call them toxic Bibles. They, this group right here, they poisoned me. And these right here are the leading selling Bible translations in English in the entire world. I'm talking about, for example, for the Catholics, the New Jerusalem Bible. For the Protestants, the International Standard Version. The King James Version. The Amplified. The New American Standard. The Message. The New Revised Standard the uh, Inter English Standard Version, the New International Version, the New King James Bible. The top 
selling Bible translations in English are toxic. They have concepts of God that are absolutely, utterly false, and they will ultimately rob you of the joy and the peace and the life that Jesus Christ gives you when you are born from above and He sends His Holy Spirit and He sends the, the fruit of the Spirit to you. These Bibles here will ultimately leave you in despair, will ultimately put you in a state of mind of becoming a Pharisee, of becoming a hypocrite, of becoming double-minded, and ultimately really being no earthly good to Jesus. This set of Bible translations here, no one ever told me while I was in church even existed. No pastor while I was in the main type of churches uh, main Protestant churches, Charismatic, Pentecostal, Baptist, Methodist, you name it, Presbyterian, I was in it. No pastor, no Bible uh, um, teacher ever told me these Bible translations existed. What's different about these Bible translations from these uh, main selling, leading selling, toxic Bible translations? These Bibles consistently, from cover to cover, declare Jesus Christ as the Savior of the entire world. That, that there is no hell, there is no concept of everlasting punishment, that the Greek and the Hebrew do not have such concepts, and they faithfully, correctly translated the words like hell, uh, behind the word hell, Hades, Tartarus, Sheol, Gehenna, as places of temporary consignment. There is no such thing in the Greek and the Hebrew as the concept of a place where God or, uh, either tortures everybody for the ages of the for, forever and ever, or a place of eternal separation. That whole concept is foreign to the Jews, is foreign to the Hebrews, and it's foreign to the early church. It's foreign to Jesus. The word hell was never in Jesus' mouth in the original uh, Aramaic that he spoke. That concept of hell was injected into the church through certain men, Jerome and Augustine and Constantine in the 4th and 5th century. These Bibles are come as a result of, of that concept, that pagan concept of hell being injected into the church. And they are the leading selling Bible translations. They're the ones that you'll find in the Christian bookstore. And these are the ones that are going to rob you of your 